So today I'm going to show you how to make one of these copy mache hot air balloons. I will show you at the end the actual balloon hanging. But just to give you a very quick idea, if I hold one end and Oops, sorry. flying around the sky. So I'll pop it out of the way. And it's very easy. It's made with a papier mache base, which again, later in the video, I'll show you how to decorate that. And a normal party blue. I've blown this one up ready, but these ones just fixed bag from Poundland. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do some brown paper papier mache. So hopefully I'll keep trying to get the balloon in screen all the time. Now you've got a choice of a few things to use. My preferred thing is sticky gum tape. Very cheap from craft shops. But you can, if you really need to, um, cut up an old envelope. There you go. I'll show you how each different effect looks. Or you can use brown packing paper. A lot of this now is used in packaging. This is free. Turn the parcel, which I've cut up there. So if I just put a piece of each together in the middle, so we've got envelope, brown paper, and ready stick gum tape. You can see obviously the colours are different, but also brown envelopes are much thicker than um, wrapping paper and gum tape's probably in the middle. Um, I'm using normal cheap craft glue and do 50-50 mix with PBA and water. Nice big amount there in a tub nice half inch paint brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the balloon but I'm going to leave about two inches here you've got space to hold the balloon. You'll find you'll have problems with a little bit of static to start off with but just sort of try and go with it. So I've got the balloon here I'll try and keep this bit in shot as I'm doing. So well as I said the normal brown paper is quite thin. Put the balloon oh, so you're leaning comfortably and actually put the PVA and water on the balloon and you'll find that whatever paper you use then you can just smooth out. You need plenty so I'm going to put my paper here on my right because I'm right handed and I can just actually use my paintbrush to pick up a piece of brown paper and it's that easy. Just smooth it on and then keep your PVA under where you're doing. I'll do a strip all the way down brown paper just so when it's dry we can see the difference and so you can see the tiny creases coming up just keep going back over with your brush you're stretching the paper fibers right, so that's our brown paper and now I'll come down this way using swap those over the brown envelope I have cut them into two by maybe three quarter inch pieces. This is the size I like to, to work out. Now you'll see immediately this paper is much thicker, so it's not taking to the shape of the balloon immediately, but when it's drying, it will give you a stronger finish. So you might have to persevere. Or do a layer with the thin paper and then do a layer of the envelopes over the top. If that's all you've got at home, things you're finding around the house. So like I say, pop it on, try and make sure you're keeping the, the moisture with the PVA underneath and on top. It'll help the fibres of each type of paper fix together. Great, that's nice and thick. But it still finds the shape of the balloon to follow for our packing machine. And all together, these balloons will have four layers. They'll have two layers of brown paper. And then I will use the um, printed paper. I'm going to go down the middle now. Move our envelopes. It's quite quick to get a surface. And then I'm going to use the sticky side, obviously, of the gum tape on the inside. You can just dip this in water and um, just use it as it is. You don't need the PVA, but I prefer to use the watered down PVA. And again, you'll see this isn't quite finding the shape as easy as the brown paper but it's slightly thicker again so it will mean less layers give you a nice strong balloon afterwards so 
I'll just show you the three examples like this. And all you've got to do is cover the glue and before even letting it dry you can put a second layer straight on. And then I would leave it overnight. Oh, little envelope there. Just going to fill my gaps now. So you've got no glue showing through. And again there. Use my finger to just smooth down the shape. And there's that one. Envelope. Okay. Now just when you've done that, just paint the whole every bit that you've put on there, pop that under there. This is what I said about holding the small bit, keeping that free of PVA so you've got a grip. Just cover the whole lot now with the brush. Move on all the creases. Right, don't leave these um, to dry under a a hot air dryer or a hot air gun, I would recommend you left that them overnight. That's fine now, you can actually apply a second coat. Um, so I'll leave it there, I'm just going to show you again, obviously with my balloon that's finished, if I tap it, how hard and set the PVA will help it set really thickly. There is just two layers of brown paper, I can sneak that there, and two layers of my printed paper. Okay, I'll come back to you when I'm ready to do the next layer now with the printed paper. Thank you. Okay, so I've come back to you now. I've oh, need the table. I've nearly completed this corner. I've just thought I'd leave this process. Um, I've just been to fetch some more water, so I'm just going to show you. I just take the lid off the PVA. Nice big squidge. Don't have to measure. And this is the sort of consistency, really like thin cream is this. Give it a good swirl, get your thickness of your PVA and the water all mixed together. And you can keep this, and um, this last mixture was here for about a week. Leave your lid on, take your brush out, give your brush a good wash. It's just an old um, sauce container that I'm using. So make sure I've got that nice and mixed. Give yourself a little bit of space on the table. Um, now this is a messy process, it's awkward because you have got to hold the balloon and get your hands wet I'm afraid. So what I'll, I've done so far as you can see I've come all the way around on most of the balloon but I've just left this top section just to show you. So again I always apply the PVA to the balloon, I don't apply it to the paper. And then I'm going to use my, continue to use my gum tape. Now what you'll find as, as areas of PVA and paper are drying things will try and catch so I'll try and stick back up just try and work with it in one area at a time as much as you can get your PVA on I'm actually resting mine on one of the the other bases for now just to give myself a bit of stability if, um, a mergle or something like that would be ideal for that job um, nearly covered our first layer of the balloon and like I say this bit at the top it needs to be reasonably, um, reasonably thick coat because this is the bit where I'm actually going to suspend the balloon from for what I'm using them for. But obviously just to make a, um, a hot air balloon for a child's bedroom as a decoration or whatever, you, you know, you can see how you get them. Um, right, so that's my first layer. And then just for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to show you, just lift it back up. You can see here I've caught in certain places, so use your finger, push it down as much as you can. I'm going to hold it as straight as I can on the table. Now you'll find that the balloon almost feels like it's alive at this stage. I'm going to go back to my brown paper, which was a slightly different thickness, and you'll see as I'm sticking this on over the top of the gum paper, I'm using my fingers and I'm smoothing. Um, so, because it's a bit thinner, it acts a little bit more like a layer of tissue paper. You could actually use normal tissue paper at this stage if you wish. Um, and then, like I said before, give it a good day to dry out. And that will mean that all the PVA will harden and help the paper structure smooth out. I actually don't mind a few crinkles and bumps. I think it adds to the effect and you will get it 
the top there if you um, use a printed paper as well so we're just trying to build up an inner strength at the moment underneath the nice pretty paper that we'll use in a second so there we go i'm working my way around almost trying to overlay all the time Just another bit of PVA over it. And then we have covered the whole balloon. I'm just going to paint it. And the best way for these to dry is actually upside down. Hang them with a bit of string on them or a bit of wire and hang them from something to dry overnight. Not too close to the radiator or anything that might cause the balloon to pop with the heat. So just, you know somewhere that you can hang them without them popping too soon because we need to keep the balloon shape for our next layer and um, unfortunately if your balloon does go down you can take it out and re-blow another balloon up inside and hope for the best that the pressure of that will stay up for you right now i'm going to do something really mucky and i'm going to get my hands and i'm going to just smooth all that pva down you can see here where it's actually starting to dry a little bit better. So we've got creases. Like I say, I don't mind them, but you can try to just push them out or we'll put another layer of the paper over the top. A bit more PVA, and then it will help to smooth things out. Um, so that's fine now. We will leave that suspended overnight, and then I'll come back to you show you how to complete the next stage. Thank you. Right, okay, so I'm ready for our next stage now, and our next stage is to cover our papier-mâché balloon with our paper of our choice. This one I've used here is in sort of a printed old map that I've got from the internet where you can use the actual royalties, royalty-free. So that's to give you an idea. Or, if you're very inventive, you can design your own, like we have here. Um, I've also found um, tags, which are matte ones, and then wrap and paper. Um, you can use an old book and use text for your images. Obviously, you can see this one has lots of children's scribbles, but some nice little old fashioned illustrations in some of these that just basically, or even the, the, just the writing. Music paper is a nice one, which again you can if you need to photograph. The one I've chosen to use is this one, and it's a design that we had as a digi download, and um, so it is one that's available to you if you'd like it with the keys and the pocket watches. And I like the little bits of chain and the straight line for this one. Um, I did mention earlier before um, sorted tissue paper, you could now put a layer of tissue on. If you want a bit of colour, and you don't want bright pattern tissue paper if you next stay it's brilliant exactly the same process but just bear in mind it's very thin and when it gets wet you will get wet as well but again ideal so what i've done and um, for, for covering one of our balloons you need five a4 sheets of paper so we've printed these ourselves and um, just on normal white printed paper okay and then i have cut my strips exactly the same as with the brown paper Got a nice little stash here. I've got my watered down PVA and I have got my blue. Now, yours should have been drying overnight, mine isn't. I have just um, given it a quick coat of PVA so it is a little bit tacky. So, if you do that first, and then I would recommend again that you get something plastic, the lid of my pot will do, to stop it sticking to any paper that you're using on the table to protect. So like I say, I've coated mine ready for PVA, but this is the sort of thing I'm doing. Nice big coat like this. Get the balloon a little bit wet again. I know we've had it drying overnight, but now it's going to get wet again. It's got to allow the shape to form with the paper following the shape. And I do sections at a time. So I would go from the base and I would do a whole section, the bit that you can see 
on the top each time. Now I tend to go long ways because that's the, how I want the pattern to be. Um, if you want to do it across the shape of the balloon, you can do that. Sometimes obviously you might want to build up a stripe or something like that with the tissue or with different coloured papers. And obviously with the pattern, the fact that I've cut it into the strips, these are varying sizes. I sort of go from about two inches by one inch to some slightly thinner ones and it allows you to cover small gaps and if you need to. So I've done that sort of section. I won't work too high up yet, I'll, I'll show you why after. But it's mainly to do with to stop you getting too sticky. Just do one section like this. It's quite quick. I mean it'll take me probably two minutes at the maximum to, to cover this whole blue. And like I say, as long as you've got plenty of strips of paper cut ready, use your, your brush to pick them up. Everything's nice and wet. This little bit of plastic will just stop them sticking. I'm just going to do just a quarter turn, so a nice big curve turn. PVA again and then start again at the bottom. And you can do perfect straight lines if you wish, or you can cross watch it a little bit, so you're getting a bit more of a zigzag effect like that. And then go back like, like that over it. It's up to you. And if you do it and you don't like it, get your next piece of paper and cover it over. It won't do any harm. You're just strengthening the idea. Mine's jumped off its little plastic thing again. I'm just going to pull that one. Trying to keep it so you can see all the time. I work my way along, snuck an extra piece on there with my brush, so I'll just smooth that down. Like I say, these little thinner pieces are quite good, they fill in gaps and have a little bit more interest. And if you know what, what you're going to do with your hot air balloon, um, I've seen these for Mother's Day table centres. Um, like I say, the ones I'm doing is of a steampunk wedding, um, ideal little presents for children's bedrooms. Once you've got them done and the little baskets, put a few treats in, a little Easter gift, but something someone can keep after. Um, and even, I suppose, if, if you were careful, if you were having an outdoor party and you knew you weren't going to have rain, you could make a few for outside float them down your garden. So, right, there we go. Let's get into the stage now where I just need to give it enough time. I'm just going to go over the whole bit that I've done. Give it another turn. Make sure I've got a little bit of plastic. It almost gets a bit like alive because <laughs> the balloon wants to move and you don't want it to. It's not quite ready to fly yet. Oop, I think I've picked one. Oh, picked two up there, I think. Again, these slightly bigger pieces do cover the surface area very quickly, but you do have to smooth them down a little bit more. So you'll find what works best for you when it comes to the size of the pieces you cut. Um, and like I say, I try and cut as many as I can. I would think you probably need around two to four A4 sheets to cover a whole balloon. Um, so I'll just show you now I'm about halfway around maybe and my first A4 sheet is used up. So um, I keep coming into the middle. Right, I'll continue to do this. I'll cut myself some more strips and then I'll come back to you at the end when I've when I've finished these things. Thank you.